Yo, yo, what's going on, y'all? I want to thank you if you're tuning in. I'm your host, Paco, and you're listening to Occupy the Media. Should have a good show for you today. Later on, we have coming up, uh, we're going to be speaking with Ginger, who was at the main convention. She's been posting up uh, videos of the Romney shenanigans that's been going on. So we're going to talk about that. And, uh, you know, see what else went down and get her take on what happened at the convention, which, of course, we took over. We took over Nevada. We taking over everything. That's uh, that's what we do. Okay, so first and foremost, don't forget to donate to RonPaul2012.com if you haven't already. Very, very important. You know, Ron Paul is going everywhere. He's speaking everywhere. He's on tour like a rock star, and we got to keep him out there. We got to. The longer he's out there, you know, the bigger and the quicker this uh, revolution will pick up. Okay, so, all right, we're going to jump into this uh, first clip I want to play you. I just got this actually between uh, my first show and this one. Uh, This is MSNBC. Earlier today on Daily Rundown, they were talking about Ron Paul and the delegates. It's it's pretty ridiculous, man. Uh, Oh, don't forget, though, Ron Paul's not going to be the nominee, though, even though he's not going to be the nominee. I always got to say that. Anyways, let's see if we can get this to play, right? Well, nobody said it was over when the Germans bombed Pearl Harbor, right? Well, don't tell Ron Paul supporters that the nomination fight is over. The Texas congressman is still in the Republican presidential race, and although his chances of winning the nomination are slim to none, he can still make things interesting, and here's how. Today we're doing a deep dive into Paul's bid to win delegates and influence in the party, and he's doing it a couple of ways. So when it comes to the head-to-head matchups, Paul, of course, is not farewell. He hasn't won a single primary or caucus on the nights that the primary or caucuses have been held. Currently, Mitt Romney has 856 delegates. Ron Paul estimated, estimated to be just 94. But that's not the whole story, and it's not stopping the 77-year-old from campaigning and firing up his supporters wherever he goes. The dictators and the pharaohs and the kings have been around for a long, long time. Freedom is a new idea. It was really developed in this country. We have lost our way, but we can find our way again, and that is what is happening now. Thank you very much. You know, the guy gets bigger crowds than Mitt Romney does. Um, But the real fight for Ron Paul and his supporters is no longer on the campaign trail. What his campaign is focused on is the Republican convention in August, and it's working the delegate selection rules at county and state conventions around the country. And boy, is it paying off. Take Maine, for example. Romney won the narrow victory in the February caucuses, but it was a non-binding election, as we told you then. The actual delegates were chosen on Sunday in Augusta. And guess what? 21 of the 24 went to Ron Paul. He won the state of Maine as far as the convention rules are concerned. It was a different strategy in Nevada, another state that Romney won back in February. Now, those caucuses were binding. So Ron Paul can't win the delegates for himself. But what what did his supporters do? They can still get chosen as the delegates. And they did. They won 22 of the 25 spots up for grabs. So that means while they can't vote for Ron Paul at the convention on the first ballot, they can carry his ideology with them to Tampa. And that means something, and I'll explain. Same story in Massachusetts. All the delegates are pledged to vote for their former governor. But even in a state where Romney won more than 70% of the vote, it's Paul's supporters that are going to fill 16 of the state's 38 delegate seats. Now, Paul's supporters have even denied Romney's former lieutenant governor, Kerry Healy, the chance to be a delegate for Mitt Romney. So what's the frontrunner's response to all this? His campaign says Governor Romney has a lot of respect for Dr. Paul and the energy his supporters bring to the process. As for individual state conventions, make no mistake that the Tampa Convention will nominate Mitt Romney and it will be his convention. But what happens if Ron Paul's supporters decide to stir the pot? Well, for one, they can do some serious damage to Romney's attempts to unify the party. Even if they can't vote for Paul, it's possible that Paul's supporters turned delegates may just refuse to vote. Maybe rather than vote for Mitt Romney, that's possible. Romney could still get the... Oh, oh, did you hear that? We could refuse to vote. Because I don't know about you, but if I was going, I don't want to put any vote ever, ever in my life for Romney. The nomination, but it just may not be pretty or unanimous. So why would Ron Paul go to all this trouble? Well, for one, he wants a strong voice at the convention and possibly a shot at influencing the party platform. There's also the possibility he's paving the way for a future White House bid by his son, Kentucky Senator Rand Paul. And And there's also a possibility that he wants to be president. Just say it. 
Stop saying Ron Paul's doing this for everything but being president. And lastly, don't count out the possibility that the 77-year-old himself could run again. After all, he's done it three times already. What's one more? There are ways that... That's right. Ron Paul 2016, second term. These Paul-influenced uh, delegates can mess around at this convention. They're not going to deny Romney the nomination. That we know. The party platform is a big deal. And guess what? Also the VP nomination. There is no pledge on that. If somehow Paul is somehow influencing 30, 40 percent of the delegates there, it's going to be a raucous convention. It's not going to make the prettiest of pictures that Mitt Romney's campaign would like to paint that week when it's supposed to be all about introducing the country to the Republican ticket. Okay, a couple things. He said we could possibly have 30 to 40 percent of the delegates there. Now, you know, when the media gives a projection, it's usually wrong. It's usually a lot more than that when, they're, when it comes to Ron Paul supporters. So we should have, what, double that then? If he's saying 30 to 40, going off of their credibility. Uh, yeah, it's amazing, though. They got to remind us that he's not going to be, be the nominee, can't get the nomination. But yet, we got a lot of states to go through, and it is not looking good for Romney. He has no momentum at all. Now, uh, earlier I played a bunch of clips which is pretty good. Uh, earlier today uh, on my show this morning, I played a lot of uh, a lot of clips that are out now. Uh, it is good that we're getting a lot of mainstream media attention in the last 24, 48 hours about Ron Paul's delegate wins. So I guess once we hit the headlines, now we hit the airwaves. They can't ignore us. All they can do is keep trying to, you know, press it down a little bit, push back a little bit. But it isn't going to work. You know, we're going to take over the Republican Party, and they just need to face it that he wants to be president. That that's why. Well, he wants to be president, but it's not just that. But they act like he doesn't want to be president at all, and that he has no chance, and that no matter what, he ain't gonna be president. And did you hear the guy earlier? A lot of people commented on the video because I put it up on my YouTube. He he was he said when uh when when Germany bombed uh, Pearl Harbor. The things they say on the media. Then they said I think they got uh, Ron Paul's age wrong. Said he was like a year or two older than he really is. It just, man, you can't listen to nothing that they say on the media. Now, coming up after the break, I got this clip we're going to play here. Santorum disses and now endorses Romney. So we got a clip back-to-back -back Santorum, uh, all the, the bad things he said about Romney, but now he's, uh, now he's endorsing him. So we'll get to that. Uh, what else do we got coming up? We got some headlines coming up, some new headlines that, that are out. Uh, let's see here. We have at the Wisconsin Rapids Daily Tribune, main Republican stick with 2010 platform, which is a Tea Party, real Tea Party platform, I believe, from what I was reading. Uh, we got an article about Rupert Mur Murdoch would like to talk to you about Ron Paul. He's trying to join in the Ron Paul discussion, man. He's a joke. Uh, let's see. The media just won't let up on Ron Paul, Washington Times. Reddit co-founder slams Facebook over CISPA support. That's over at RT, Russia Today. Uh, what do they got talking about? Ron Paul headlines. Uh, oh, Ron Paul stealthy, delicate strategy. What does he really want? Uh, let's see here. Uh, Washington GOP expects convention tussle with Ron Paul. So they're gearing up, y'all. They know the convention's coming up at the end of the month for Washington. And they know Ron Paul supporters are, are getting ready. And then on U.S. News and Report, they ask, should Ron Paul drop his bid for president? The question should be, should Romney drop his bid for president? If you guys go to my uh, YouTube, I post up the video. Look at Romney's crowd in Virginia. Just recently, he had a crowd. He had an event in Virginia. <laughs> Very weak, embarrassing. Matter of fact, I think Ron Paul bring more family members <laughs> to his rally than Mitt Romney got people. Anyways, I'm Pac with your host. We'll be back. Sign the pot of media. Hi, I'm Dana, and I started out as a Ron Paul fan just like you. And now I'm a full-time volunteer leader at our Ron Paul headquarters in Venice, California. It starts with the first thing you hear Ron Paul say that is different than all the other politicians and that you just happen to agree with 100%. Next, there's a point where you realize that you agree with everything he has to say.